people have not stood up for Jesus. Right. We claim to be the church. And I think of the example of David as a 12-year-old boy, 12 to 14 years old. The entire Israeli army were shaking in their boots because of one giant, Philistine, Goliath. And David had the chutzpah to say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine to defy the armies of the living God? And we have seen right after right, we've seen our culture change because the church has whipped out. And I'll tell you, it may be a losing battle, but I refuse to give up. And I think more Christians and more pastors need to stand up, get some backbone, let their voices be heard, and not be afraid of the consequences that we have been pigeonholed into. Uh, let me pass that. Well, I know what you're all waiting for, me to get out of the way, yeah. and to bring forward <laughs> Heidi Harris. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, Heidi has been a talk show host for many years and is also an author. You have your book here today, right? Yeah, yeah, he puts them on the wall. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> okay. She's one of those rare people who was actually born here <laughs> in Las Vegas. She had a, a career in singing for a long time until Celine Dion threatened to break her leg. So uh, <laughs> she was in radio for 19 years at KXNT from 1999 to 2005. Uh, she did a show in Los Angeles for one year and then returned to KXNT in uh, 2015 until 2017 on the 6 to 9 a.m. in the morning slot. So many of you listened to her. Uh, one of, a couple of the ladies here were saying they would drive to work and they so miss her and they listen to her at work. And uh, she's been Las Vegas' predominant talk show host. To me, I've said, told people many, many times, she should really have a national television show. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, conservative broadcaster. Her show was a two-time two -time winner of the Electronic Media Award, the EMA, for Best Local Talk Show. And currently, she does her podcast three times a week. She can probably tell you a little bit about that. She's married to the handsome man sitting beside her, Brian, 16 years this month. It's my pleasure to welcome this morning and a big Four Seasons welcome for Miss Heidi Harris. incredible group of people spirit-filled people what a fun thing to do to be here today yes. really has been a lot of fun and I want to thank Pastor Walker first of all real donuts yes. when, he said, when he said Krispy Kreme I'm thinking oh, real donuts on Charleston yeah. New York City. and he said it I couldn't believe it <laughs> I make like this big chocolate anyway uh, I'll be here for the donuts I want to thank Pastor Walker because he came out of nowhere he was the first guy to jump to my defense when the whole situation happened. Wrote a letter to the RJ, he was all over, he was furious, and I want to thank him because yeah. he's been an amazing support to me. Every time he calls me, I'm walking my dogs, he knows 8 a.m. from the middle of the day for me, I still get up like four, it's ridiculous. But he'll call me, I'm walking my dogs, and every time he does, he's one of those kind of people, and many of you I'm sure know this, every time you, you talk to him, he just is an encouragement. He, it's like he calls at the right time and he just lifts you up. He's that kind of guy. He's just amazing. And it's just been an honor to get to know him and his beautiful wife. And we've just had a lot of fun with them. And it's just been great because this is what we're talking about. You've got to all stand for something. And a lot of people yeah. don't want to do that anymore. Uh, I want to quote uh, Chuck Colson. There's a, a, a co quote that I found in a Chuck Colson book. It's kind of an obscure one, but I wrote it down. I, I printed it because I wanted to get it right. And this is so important for what all of us do. He said, you know uh, Chuck Colson, right? Prison Fellowship? Okay, right. everybody knows. He said, Christians are to do their duty as best they can. 
But even when they feel they're making no difference, that they're failing to bring Christian values to the public arena, success is not the criteria. Faithfulness is. Yes. Yes. For in the end, we know, we have the assurance as Christians that even the most difficult political situations are in the hands of a sovereign God. And isn't that true? Amen. And having done talk radio for 19 years, you know, when you first get into it, you're going to solve the problems of the world. That's why you get into it, right? I'm going to get on that, I'm going to bang on that table and I'm going to straighten out city council. <laughs> or whatever it might be. And you realize you can't, nobody can do that. You know, you can't stop evil. And sometimes you can make a difference, sometimes you can't. I will tell you one, one thing in this town that I made a difference. And I will, I'm going to take credit for this. Picture, if you will, Rancho in 95. Okay, y'all picturing it? Yeah. Okay. If you're going down Rancho and you're going to go south on 95, yeah. picture that, but that off-ramp, that on-ramp onto the freeway. So remember those turtle screens they put out a couple years ago, those little decorative screens? What do those cost me, right? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so they had two screens at that off-ramp. So as you were going on to the 95, you couldn't see if people were coming off Rancho. And I used to have the NDOT people on my show every week, or every month or so. And I said, you know that stupid little turtle screen? I can't see around it. And somebody's going to get killed because you can't anticipate your speed because you can't see if they're coming. And then you slam on your brakes, someone hit you from behind. We've been there. So they said, well, we'll take a look. So they went and they took a look and they took it down. Wow. Thank you. What's scary is that somebody who, who did much better than I did in math put that thing up. Right? right? I flunked algebra in high school. I flunked ceramics in high school. That's in the book. So, I mean, really? You went to, you went to school to engineer things and you put this turtle screen and we can't see around it, so I have one little bit of proof that I actually existed. <laughs> to, to, to back, thank you, Michael. To back, next time you pass that intersection, you're going to think of me, I know. So to back up what Pastor Bill was saying, we all need to stand together. And the reason that we're losing so many skirmishes in the culture war is because we keep doing this. Oh, I don't want him to call me hateful. I don't want him to think I'm intolerant. I don't want him to do this. I don't want to do that. It's not about hating anybody. But there is a set of standards that the Bible talks about that we are called to live by. We are. And nobody, in the case of, well, in sex isn't even the biggest thing. The Bible talks far more about gossip, right? Pride. A lot more about that than it talks about what you do with your body. But interesting, too, the Bible warns women, uh, men about women, but never women about men. Hmm, watch that, guys. I don't know why. So many things about women being sneaky. Uh, but, but the interesting thing is, you know, the sexuality part of it, that's not the, the main issue of the Bible. It really is not the main issue of the Bible. It's part of it. And, but people have made it this crazy thing. My friend Frank Turk, who wrote, uh, I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. I don't know if you guys know him. He calls sex the new religion, and he's right. Because this is what's happening now. I mean, I'm not knocking on your door and asking you, you know, who you're spending the night with, so don't come into my kid's school and try to explain how you're doing what you're doing at night. That's where we have to draw the line. Amen. Amen. So, nobody's being intolerant, nobody's hateful, nobody's criticizing, everybody's got their weaknesses, but if you're gonna start trying to teach my kid these things, then we got a problem. Yes. And that's what's happening. Yes. And there is no neutral ground in the culture war. Either they're winning or you're winning. And in my situation, and many of you may be aware, um, basically what it came down to is a big ad agency in town has a gay guy who has a partner and they have kids together and they were upset that I said kids need a mom and a dad. And because of that, they threatened the FM stations, they threatened to pull their money, they threatened all these things. And what's interesting about that is the people who, that I worked at the radio station with, 90% of them did not agree with anything I said. They weren't social conservatives. And then one of them called me and said, well, I can't believe you said that. I go, whoa, wait a minute. I'm not the one attacking your money. They are. I had a comment that they could have tolerated. Mm -hmm. yeah, right? right? They're going after your money. I'm not costing you money. They could have tolerated what I said. You're so tolerant unless somebody says something you don't like. Mm -hmm. And it's scary. And the first book signing that I was going to do got canceled because some people threatened the restaurant owner. Oh, you know, whatever. You're just another, you know, be another pebble on the road of life, that's okay, you're not going to stop me, but it tells you how strong that lobby is and how many of those people are, are terrified. A lot of the business owners are terrified. And it's a small group of people. It's not every gay person. And it's not even about gay people. My, I, I hate the fact that I've been thrown into this mess now that I'm anti-gay. I'm not anti-gay. I don't hate gay people. Who hates gay people here? Nobody. Nobody hates gay people. 
But here's another interesting thing that happened that I think is important to mention. A friend of mine was discussing my situation with a high-ranking executive at ABC. And most people in the business had heard about what happened, not that I'm the center of anybody's universe other than my dogs. But, <laughs> but people in the business knew about it because it was made all the trades and all that kind of stuff. And he said two things that were interesting. The first thing he said was, well, I don't agree with what she said because I have gay friends. Huh. So most of us have gay friends. Yeah. What's that got to do with anything? Yeah. Kids needing a mom and dad. What does that have to do with kids needing a mom and dad? So I didn't say anything anti-gay. Right. And the second thing he said, this is more important. He said, and if she's using the Bible to back her, the Bible is subject to a lot of interpretations. Well, first of all, I didn't use the Bible. I didn't mention the Bible. I don't care if it's two unbelievers, a mom and a dad are what kids need. I never mentioned the Bible. But it's interesting that he said that. Well, it, that it must be subject to interpretation. Really? Let me tell you something. If this bush right here told me what to believe, it's none of his business. <laughs> right? That's important, guys, because he was upset that I was using the Bible. Well, different interpretation. Okay, fine. I've got my interpretation. You have yours. What's that got to do with anything? I have the right to believe whatever I want to. If this bush talks to me and tells me something, you know, there are witches. But whenever I used to have some witch neighbors, they would have these weird parties. They'd make a lot of noise and run around trees. I don't know what they did. <laughs> I knew there were witches because they all had really weird license plates and uh, you know things, personalized plates, and they had stickers that said things about witch. Which is fine. I don't, I don't care. I'm not. I'm knocking on their door, telling them not to do it. But if the tree told them something, who's to criticize them because the tree told them, right? But that tells you the attitude that a lot of people have about Christianity. They're threatened and they're terrified that you have a sense of values and that you get it from someplace. If you think the Bible's full of garbage, then just dismiss it. Dismiss me. Who cares what I think? And the thing I don't get is when I was not a Christian, when I was 21, I was not a Christian. Now, I was raised in a home where, you know, I heard about Jesus. I never got the gospel, but I heard about Jesus. And my mom would drive around town, and I lived in Charleston Heights. You guys know where that is? Charleston Indicator? Okay. It was new back then. <laughs> now we had, a, and, and wait, wait, if you've heard this one, we had a big desert behind our house that they told our parents they were never going to build on. <laughs> Who's heard that one before? <laughs> Ten years later, here comes the big building. Yeah. Anyway, we used to play in that desert, you know, yeah. dig sports and chase lizards and all that kind of stuff. Anyhow, where was I? I was talking about the neighborhood. Okay, so... So we grew up in Charleston Heights, and I totally lost my train of thought. What was Your I going to tell you? My mama, thank you. My mom would drive around, and she would point out, I had a friend who was Catholic, and there was the Catholic church. I had another friend who was Mormon. There's that Mormon church on Charleston. My mom would drive around and say, oh, that's so-and-so's church, that's so-and-so's church. No comment was ever made about those people are evil because they go in there. So I wasn't raised with any kind of racial prejudice or religious prejudice. And I don't understand why, if you're not a Christian, why are you so worried that I am? What scares you so much? If you don't think there's anything in that book that convicts you, why are you worried about it? And most of us, and I have relatives, right? Oh, you mean that whole plane full of people, it was all their time to go at the same time? Who's heard that one? Yeah. <laughs> right, God's plan. Right, we've all heard that. And it's interesting how most people, certainly my family, maybe in some of your families, they're the ones picking on you about it. Mm -hmm. They're poking at you. You're not saying, hey, did you go to church on Sunday? You're not bugging them. They're bugging you because they're bothered. They're bothered that you believe something and that you believe something completely. And how many people have heard this? Oh, you're narrow-minded. Oh, yeah. oh, you know, I wasn't a Christian until I was 21. I know how the other side thinks. I don't know how many of you were Christians from childhood. I was not. I know exactly how they think. I'm not narrow-minded. I looked at the evidence, and I became a Christian about age 21 because it made sense to me, and I looked at the evidence. But, oh, you're narrow-minded because you believe this. I mean, is anybody going to argue that if we all follow what the Bible said, life would be better? No. There'd be no out of, out of I, mean, I mean, you know, wouldn't it be nice if, the, if we all did that? I know it's not possible because we're all evil, rotten sinners. Certainly I am. But if you, you know, if you think about the fact that people weren't sleeping together before they were married, if they weren't gossiping, all these other things that are that the Bible talks about, it would be better for all of us, and because God knows us. That's why the Bible says if God man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat, because God knows we're lazy. Yeah. And if we didn't have to get, we could just binge watch and not work. <laughs> binge watch at Netflix. Or whatever. We would work, right? Why do we have to? We might, we might not, you know. But because God knows us, God knows what we need. 
And so I'm not trying to impose my values on you. Oh, here's another one. I love this one. Well, you can't legislate morality. You heard that one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every single law is based on morality. Yeah. That may not be yours. You may think it's perfectly fine to steal your neighbor's tools. <laughs> but there, it's all, there's, everything's based on morality. Everything. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not steal. Now, adultery is legal now, but you know, all the things, that, and there, there are plenty of things, can we all agree that there are plenty of things that are legal but not moral? Yeah. Right? So the idea that something's legal suddenly doesn't make it immoral. I'm not going to give you a lot of details, but let's just put it this way. I had a neighbor who was abusing a dog horribly. And to make a long story short, I got him away from the guy. Just saying. I didn't steal him. I just didn't get returned. You know, there's moral, there's legal, and there's, hey, you're not, not a nice guy. <laughs> okay, and that's all I'm gonna, that's all the detail. And, you know, sorry, I had to do the right thing. And I did the right thing, yeah. And he's like, I didn't kill him. And so I just got the dog away. And every time I see him, I just want to, I want to go, nee, 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 but I can't. I can't tell him. I can't tell him what I did. You know, so I should pray for him. Gosh, that's hard. Yeah. Gosh, that's hard. Yeah. It's tough when it's, you know, kids or animals, right? Yeah. That's the stuff that makes all of us crazy. And so I think it's really important that we all stand up, and all of us have been in a situation in some way. Uh, maybe it's job-related, maybe it's not. You know, my retirement plan is to lose a great-paying job at 55. <laughs> Fantastic. That's my retirement plan. Hope you like it. So... I didn't plan to lose my job, and when I put the thing on Facebook, I just was a comment, and my boss said, well, you've said that on the air before, and I said, yeah, I know, because I've been very consistent. If there, and there are women who will have kids purposely without a father, and they've taken issue with me on Facebook, well, kids don't need a dad, really? How dare you? Now, no one's saying that single parents can't raise kids, of course they can. Many of you may be single parents, have been raised by single parents, everyone knows single parents can and do, do a fantastic job. But we also know it's easier if you have a mom and a dad, right? Yeah, yes. 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 That's all I ever said. This is the ideal situation. But for someone to say, kids don't need a dad, <laughs> I had a great dad. But to make that decision for your child, to purposely not have a father, I think that's immoral. And I've said that on Facebook. So when I put the other thing on Facebook, my boss said, well, you've said that before, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Well, then they came after me. But that's okay, because God's got it. I mean, it wasn't like they caught me in bed with the senator. <laughs> Is there one? No, there isn't one, actually, that I don't want to. No, no, not really. Can't think of one. But, you know, so it wasn't like I did anything immoral or illegal. In the 19 years I was on commercial radio, I never got sued for slander. And that's tough because there's a lot of stuff I know about these politicians that I can't say on the air. Believe me. Barbara's laughing. Secretary of State Barbara Stagaski's there. How are you? Barbara, you know I love you. You're my favorite politician. And she, I've known her for 22 years. She's fantastic. But there's a lot of stuff that all of us know, dirt about politicians, that I don't go on the air with because it would just be gossiping. And there's no point in that. I stick to the issue. Are you taking my money? Are you grabbing my money? Are you trying to make pot legal, whatever it might be? Then we have a problem. Otherwise, you know, so I've never been sued, which is pretty amazing, considering 19 years on the air. I did leave one job, it's in the book, uh, because they wanted me to apologize for something I didn't even say. Even though everything we say is on tape, that's a whole other story. But th there's another integrity issue, because at the time, I was in a situation where I love my job, I love the people I worked with, and I had a choice to make. Was I gonna apologize for this or not? And I said, no, how can you apologize for something you didn't say? So, you know, everybody, everybody in this room has been in situations, they may have been financial, they may have been professional, they may have been something else, maybe a family issue, where you've had to choose between your integrity and what you know to be right, and what would be easier. Mm -hmm. It's so much easier to just go with the flow like a dead fish, right? right? Yeah. It's, so, it's, like, it's like being a parent. It is so much easier to say yes, because you just want quiet, yeah. right? It, you don't care. I just don't want any more arguing, I'll do whatever, whatever you want. And it's the same thing with Christians. It's easier to go with the flow, and then, then you mean nothing. You're not consequential in the world. Not that I think I'm consequential, but I think all of us matter. Standing up is always the right thing to do. And it's never been popular. I'm just some little tiny person in this town that you, some of you have heard of. But there are this has happened throughout you know, human history. People get burned at the stake. There were times they were burned at the stake for having a Bible in anything but Latin. I mean, Christian persecution has been far worse than it is now in other countries. It's still very bad in other places in the world. So I'm nothing new and it'll be, you know, it's going to continue. 
But we just have to stand up. I'm not going to walk across your lawn and take your rights, but you can't be taking mine. Right. Mm -hmm. And in the case of the bakery, first of all, who wants someone who doesn't like you to bake your food? Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody worked in a restaurant? Yeah. <laughs> I went to a restaurant the other day for lunch, and the mashed potatoes were freezing cold. I worked in a restaurant. You think I sent those babies back? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I do not send you back. Oh, no. But that's the whole thing. Why would you go to a bakery where someone doesn't appreciate your lifestyle? First of all, why do I know about it? Why are we talking about sex? We're talking about cake. But okay, why, would you, why can't you buy a cake and just put two guys on it later? Because it wasn't about the cake. It was never about the cake. And the people at the bakery offered, they gave these folks a whole list of names of folks who would take care of them. It's never about the cake. It's not about the flowers. It's not about anything else. It's about taking somebody else's rights away. He wasn't running down the street with a rolling pin threatening the gay guys. They were coming in his place and trying to force him to accept. See, there's a difference between tolerance and acceptance. I mean, in America, two people can walk down the street, gay straight, nobody cares. Nobody cares. No one's persecuting you. No one's throwing you off the building. Try that in some other countries yeah. in the world. Right. But, but to say to someone you have to accept something, that's different. That's different. You know, somebody, there are all kinds of sins that people commit that you may go, well, it's pretty crappy. And, and you know, so let's say somebody you know is committing adultery. No, I'm not going to say that's great. And an interesting thing, and I mentioned this in the book, I had a guy email me. Many of you have been following the Laura Ingram situation yeah. with that kid. Yeah. And it's a, I swear, I, wrote, I had crystal ball when I wrote the book. I had a young guy email me when this whole thing happened, and he said, well, I, I shouldn't have to suffer hatred and bigotry because of who I love. Hmm. And I said, really? I said, you don't have a right to acceptance of anything, right? When you walk out the door in the morning, somebody's going to have an opinion. They're going to have an opinion about what you're wearing, what your hair looks like, what you're listening to, what you're driving, where you live. Everyone's going to have an opinion. It's got nothing to do with sexuality. That may be part of it, but maybe they don't like your partner and you're straight. They don't like your girlfriend, whatever. You don't have the right to live in a world where everybody goes, all oh, right, perfect. <laughs> but we have a whole generation of kids growing up today. Have, when's the last time you saw a kid with a skinned knee? I'm serious. Many of you probably have grandkids. They fall off the monkey bars. They land on foam. When I was a kid, we landed in the dirt. And the monkey bars were 120 degrees. And we liked it. And we drank out of the hose and we liked it. And we sat on those vinyl seats in my mom's old cougar, which was always breaking down with no air conditioning. And we stuck to the seats and we liked it. So brats today. You know, it's terrible, but we got a bunch of kids who can't take it. And if you criticize them, if you challenge their assumptions, you tell them they're wrong about anything, they get indignant. I mean, all Laura Ingram did is tell this kid he was whining. She's got three kids. I'm sure she said that before. Stop whining. Every parent said that. She should never have apologized to him, and I don't want to criticize her because I like her, and that's not, that's not the point of this. I wouldn't have done it. I don't know what went on behind the scenes, but the point is, he was being a brat. But here's the scary thing. This generation of kids, if they ever leave home, will be a huge group of consumers. And that's the problem. Because people like Rachel Ray was one of the advertisers who left Laura Ingram. She makes dog food. I don't eat my dogs her food, but whatever. I don't dislike her. I don't really know. But if I can get you at 19 or 20 to feed your dog that whatever, they know they probably have a consumer for life. And that's the whole point. That's why these kids are so powerful. And they don't want someone to tell them they're wrong about anything. And it's pretty scary. And that's going to be scary for all of us. Most people will be changing our diapers. Right, right. That's a scary thought. <laughs> that's a scary thought, isn't it? That many of you may employ those kids and you see that, you know, they, they just have not been told no. And I don't really know why. I mean, there are some parents who are doing it right. But a lot of kids, they just absolutely, and I've in Christian homes. Right. How many of you see Christian parents just putting up with it? It's one thing to say, I can't control you, you're 22, you're making bad decisions. That's one thing. Every parent's been through that. I'm sure my parents had to roll their eyes at me many times. But it's different to applaud it. Yeah. And now we have people go, well, that's fantastic, honey, anything you want to yeah. do. No, no. I, I would say what God says, I will love you no matter what, but I am not going to applaud your bad decisions. Yeah. And we have a lot of parents today, they don't want to, you know, they don't want to admit on Facebook they don't have a perfect family. Right? So they don't want to say anything about their kid. That's all, you know, hearts and flowers. One of my friends calls Facebook a highlight reel. So true. <laughs> you think I put a bad picture on Facebook? 
I had a picture the other day. I got taken with a three-star Marine Corps general and uh, Peter Pace. He's been the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And people are like, oh, you look so great. I'm like, I'm, the, the camera's like 30 feet away. Hello. <laughs> and, the, and the light was dim. I'm not putting the clothes. You don't see me doing selfies. I mean, come on, people. That's not real life. But there's so many people who are comparing their lives to other people's lives on Facebook. And then you get a distorted impression of what's going on. Everybody's got stuff. Everybody's got stuff. That's why you need to pray for people. Because it, whether it's stuff happening to them. I just talked to some friends yesterday who have a horrible legal situation. that's not their fault. Somebody's dragging them to court. Could destroy them financially. And they did nothing wrong. And these are Christians. And, you know, to the point that Pastor Bill was making, we may lose the culture war because we are losing it quickly. It's not that it's worse than it's ever been, but it's been much better in America. Because mm -hmm. there's always been evil and stuff. Yeah. But it wasn't accepted. Now yeah, it's accepted. Right. Yeah. Now we're calling evil good, just like the Bible says. Right, yeah. People call good evil, evil good. Right, yeah. We're just right out there going, yep, yeah, that's it. I'm doing what I want to do, and I don't care what you think about it. And if you say anything, you're terrible. Mm -hmm. So it's been better in America. And of course, there's no America in the Bible, at the end of the Bible, so we don't know how long we're going to last as a country. But we've got to stand up. We really have to stand up. And we have to be strong. And we have to never forget what we're here to do. And that is, of course, to be faithful. We can't control everybody else. God doesn't call us to do that. God's not calling us to judge everybody. God's not calling us to get into Twitter wars. That's not what it's about. But when you are, it gets nasty, so you know, right? Twitter's, one of my friends calls it a sewer. He's probably right. And I've, I've engaged in some Twitter wars, believe me, I have. Like, well, okay. <laughs> like the other day, those women who drove off the cliff with six kids in the car? Oh. Where's Black Lives Matter? Right. Uh, yeah. Six yeah. black kids got murdered by two white women and nobody cares. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, Where, where's Al Sharpton? Right. Yeah. Nobody cares. If they were Christian homeschoolers? Oh, you kidding me? It'd be all over the papers. <laughs> all over the websites. Everybody, it's Christian homeschoolers should never be able to adopt. Look what happened, right? Right? That's right. That's what we're talking about. That's calling evil good and good evil. And nobody's, nobody cares about those lives, I guess. Those six black lives don't matter. So it's interesting how that works. Uh, yes, sir, did you mention? People in this country don't have to worry about the next meal. People are great back in this country and they don't get, they have a lot of things How do they govern the third world for a while? People are happy to have food. That's it. It's true. Yeah, you're right because most of the world just basically hopes they're going to live through the day. Yeah. Yeah. And they truly don't know if they're going to. I mean, I'll go home and look at the cabinet and open it and go, eh, I don't want anything here. I'm getting Del Taco. <laughs> yeah. My husband hates this. I, I actually interviewed Bill Ingball. Anybody know who he's a comedian? Uh -huh. I interviewed him years ago, and we were laughing. He and I both do the same thing. We hide our fast food bags from our spouses. <laughs> <laughs> the other day I got raisin canes, and I'm like stuffing the thing in the very bottom of the trash can. <laughs> so I don't get a lecture from him when I come home. <laughs> because I, you know, I, that's my thing. I love fast food. But you're right about that. We have time to mess with the stupid stuff because we don't have to worry about how we're going to live today. And that is so important. I want to leave you with this. Uh, this 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you, which of course has been the theme throughout the entire morning. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. We can't give up. We can't give in. We don't have to get nasty, but we just have to stand firm. And if we do that, imagine what a difference it'll make in the entire country. So thank you for having me very much. Yes, sir. About the, the, uh, the conservatives and, and Christians are being attacked all the time, but the other side gets away with a heck of a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy Kimmel, did you see what oh, he Did you see what Jimmy yeah. Kimmel is saying? Yeah. And I was I was tweeting that. I said, if Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel is saying some horrific things yeah. about gay people. Horrific. And I can't even repeat it. But let me just put it this way. He and Sean Hannity are in a Twitter war. Now, I don't know why Sean bothered to get into the mud with him. Because I like Sean, and I don't know why. But it started with Jimmy Kimmel making fun of the First Lady's accent. Okay? Even though she speaks five languages. Okay? She's a very smart woman. Well, she couldn't pick whatever. Went. <laughs> couldn't pick the faithful husband. But okay, we'll just move on. Uh, but anyway, she, a beautiful woman, speaks five languages and all that. Uh, but but Sean Hannity left to her defense, which is, I understand. 
And then Kimmel went after him and was making some disgusting comments about what he and uh, you know Bill O'Reilly did to get each other sexually, and he and Trump. And it just it's but it's just gotten disgusting. Now Sean hasn't gotten disgusting, but Kimmel has. And some gay people have been furious with him. I I I think it's disgusting. And if I were a gay person, I'd be livid. But if you're on the left, you can say whatever you want to say. Right. And that's the and I've never said anything like that in my life about somebody. I would never do that. It's disgusting. But yet, he'll probably get away with it, just like the kids in the van. We, we don't care about, only if the right's doing something wrong right. do we care about that. And it, unfortunately, it's very, uh, it's a problem. Yes, sir. I grew up Catholic, and I went to a bishop one time, and when I got saved, and I told him, you know, what you're preaching is not what's in the Bible. And he says, oh, we don't follow the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> At least he was honest. Yeah, yeah. I said, well, how the heck do you expect anyone to respect your organization? I said, when well, your homosexuality is rampant in this church, you guys do nothing about it. Boys are being molested, and I said, "You guys can call yourself a church, a God-fearing church, or not a God-fearing church at all." Yeah. So I'm not trying to be, you know, uh, nasty to you, but I said, "I'm just being straight." Yeah. You know, and even well, I think that I think that that behavior goes on in all churches, and all denominations. Um, it just seems to be more, more discovered in the Catholic Church, but it goes on everywhere. I mean, no, nobody's immune from it, but when you find it, you have to stop it. Whatever it might be, you know, pastors having an affair with the congregate, you got to stop it. You know, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on that note, when you said we all have to band together, um, I I was trying to contact other conservative talk show hosts and uh, and let them know that all conservative news media talk show hosts on TV or the radio uh, should be banding together for mutual protection, kind of like World War II, uh, you know, the planes circled each other for mutual protection when they were outnumbered. Um, so any advice to us as far as how we go about doing that? I mean, I've been emailing and, and, and Facebooking my reps, president and stuff like that, but there's only so much the little citizen can do. Any advice for that? Well, I think when it comes to the sexual issue, there are a lot of people who are scared. A lot of even so-called conservatives are terrified to touch this topic. Mm -hmm. And you have to be willing to lose whatever it may be. A job, you have to be willing to do it. You have to go down with the ship. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to do it because you know what? God's got it. You know, and even if I even if I had done something illegal or immoral or anything else when the situation happened to me, God's going to have my back. God's going to find a way to make this work. And, and you either believe that or you don't. Amen. You don't say, well, I believe God's got it. Oh, crap, I lost my job. Yeah, now right. what am I going to do? I mean, you know, and we've all, most of us have been through it, professionally, financially, family situations, illness, whatever. Most people have been through it. And you either believe it or you don't believe it. And how many of us can sit here and recite times where God is coming at the last second? Amen. Okay. And you're like, no, I wanted it three weeks ago. No, last minute, that's it, right? He comes in every time because his timing is always perfect. It's not ours, but it's always perfect. And so either you believe that he's got it or you don't believe it. And so when you believe that, whether you're any, anybody in this room, when you believe that, then you don't back down. You don't ever let your integrity be compromised for a job. There is no job that I need that's going to compromise my integrity. And, and you just read, you read these stories every day of people put in that situation. And so it's not just me. I'm just a, a, an example in town. But it happens. And by the way, it's not a free speech issue. I talk about that in the book. It's not free speech. I don't have the right to free speech at work. Um, they, my employer has a right to say. Because let's say, for example, you were at a white supremacist rally on Friday night. You know, would your boss want you in the building on Monday? <laughs> Working with, I got someone carrying a torch on Friday. Well, that's not good for morale. So the boss should have the right to fire you if they don't like whether whether you guys agree with that or not or it, it's still it's not legally a free speech issue and I that's why I didn't whine about it I said I'm not whining they have the right to do what they want to do and and as it should be yes ma'am um, I was going to say um, we a lot of times we do lose battles in this world but in the back of the book that's right the Bible we win yeah we read the back we of the book exactly right we absolutely do we, exactly win right. the war. we, absolutely yeah, do. we do win the battles, war yeah, we may lose a few skirmishes, and they think they got us, but they don't. They don't have anything. They haven't gotten anything. Yes, sir. I have one more comment. Sure. You mentioned about Laura Ingram giving an apology. When she gave it, I thought that would diffuse the situation. No, it doesn't. It emboldens, it it emboldens them. That kid won't even accept an apology. No. You, can't, you can't apologize to terrorists. No. If you're a kid on the playground, and, and a bully is picking on you, and you willingly give up your lunchbox, you know what they do? Now I want your jacket. Yeah, that's what they do. That emboldens it. Unless you're wrong, unless you said something that you really didn't mean to say, or was really offensive. All she did is tell him he was whining, and he was whining. And even if she'd said something worse, I mean, come on, you little brat. You, no one's forcing you into the limo to go on all those cable appearances. You put yourself. I don't care how old you are. You put yourself in it. I've done cable TV 
hundreds of times. I, can't, I walk out of the studio, I get in the car, and the tweets start. You're ugly, you're stupid, you're this, you're that, and those are the nice ones. And, but, but if you can't handle it, then don't do it. No one's yeah. forcing me onto the set. And this kid wants to make himself the face of it, but I'm glad Fox has stood their ground so far. So far. We'll see if the other advertisers leave, and if you know, they've got the right to keep the lights on and, and make that decision. But it's amazing how little resistance it takes to push these bullies back. You know, Bill Maher defended Laura Ingram. Mm -hmm. I saw that on the internet this morning. Yeah, I'm probably. surprised because he says Christians are mentally ill. Right. Yeah. You know, once in a while he, yeah. comes, he comes up, he talks about he's overtaxed. There's a few things we can agree with. Probably. I don't agree that Christians are mentally ill, but yeah, you're right. I'm not a huge fan of Bill Maher. <laughs> No, thanks. Yes, sir. I just wanted to thank you and uh, on behalf of the whole congregation for coming and also for just uh, declaring the truth unapologetically. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. But this, that's not about one category, so it's just about standing for God. Okay. Let's get a whiteboard and I'll write our sins down on it, okay? <laughs> no? No? No want to do that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah you don't want to. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Miss you every morning. Every oh, you're so sweet. I flip that switch and I think, I want to hear it. Oh, you're so sweet. Well, I put my podcast, and if you're somebody who rolls your eyes when you hear a podcast and go, oh my gosh, I don't want to do that, that's okay. If you go to HeidiHarris.com, I post them there. So you don't need to go through iTunes and subscribe if that's not your thing. I totally get it. I do have them on iTunes, but you can just go HeidiHarris.com. I put them up three times a week. And I talk about, you know, what things I think are kind of important and whatever. And I make them short. You'll be glad to know. <laughs> Nothing's worse than a 45-minute podcast. I'm like, okay, I'm done now. <laughs> yes, I miss you so much. Oh. When you, that took you off. Mm -hmm. I have my morning thing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Change the morning. Change the morning. Uh-huh. When I got here and went to the first morning church, I got couldn't, couldn't stand it. Mm. So I am a Christian now, and I believe in God, and I, well, that's great. I'm, I'm very grateful. Well, thank God you. Well, I'm glad, I, I thank you for that. I appreciate that. I like sleeping in without setting an alarm. It is fantastic. Because <laughs> that's the thing people don't understand. When you work morning drive, they go, oh, you have the whole day. Yeah. You don't know that I was up for four hours before you even got out of bed. So no, when I get at noon, I'd be like a zombie. There'd be no lunches. You can't go out at night. You only feel good for a certain period of time in the day. And you can only take so much Excedrin and pretty soon it's going to rot your liver. So there you go. Anyway, thank you all so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It's been a wonderful service today to have uh, Heidi in the house. And, uh, you know, what I want uh, the church to understand, and I know those of you who attend here know this, but, you know, what, what Heidi was fired for was making a comment about uh, that, that it, this is simple, uh, that, that a child should have a, a, a mother and a father. And it's not attacking the, the gay world. Um, you know, n nobody in this room, or few, would know this issue better than I do. Yeah. However, you know, the difference is, we as Christians, we love all people. And we come into the church of Jesus Christ as sinners in need of a Savior. Once we make a commitment to Jesus, Jesus says, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And that's the difference. We, we, anybody that comes in here, where, whatever they come from, you know, 1 Corinthians lists, uh, you know, gives a catalog of, as it says, and such were some of you. And it lists, you know, slanderers, uh, homosexuals, uh, the sexually immoral. You know, there are four scriptures that deal specifically with same-sex partners coming together that God says no. There are over 200 that deal with opposite sex couples and, and the way sexuality. It's narrow. Jesus said the road is narrow. When, once we come to Jesus, now, if you're outside the church, you know, our best next door neighbors in our cul de sac where Stephanie lived were a lesbian couple. The, most, the sweetest, most loving women. 
Uh, I, the one just passed me. They moved out of our neighborhood. One just passed me. I love them with all my heart. They both had Bible-believing backgrounds. What they choose to do, it's, it's their choice. We're in a free country. Jesus never chased anybody, never pounded anybody over the head and said, you, you got to No. But once we come to Jesus... So I know a number of you have uh, gay relatives, you know, gay sons, gay daughters. And, and, and that's okay. We're not condemning in anybody. However, what we do say is when you come into the church, everything changes, number one. And secondly, as Heidi expressed, d don't bring this into our schools and then say, this is what we, we, we don't put this in our, the face of our children. As she said, we, we don't want heterosexual couples coming in and saying, we want you to understand, uh, hey, we, we enjoy threesomes. You know, no, you, you know, there is morality. And, and that's what is sad these days is that the nation has changed. Again, I always say when I was growing up, there were people that went to the Roman Catholic Church, some that went to all kinds of Protestant denominations. Many of us were not even alive in the Holy Spirit. However, we were all agreed on what was right and what was wrong. And there was order. There was order, you know. So at any rate, it's, it's, we're now having to push back. We're now having to stand. Uh, should there be another episode, another Heidi Harris episode in this city, I would hope, that people would join together with me, yes. write letters to the editor, yes. call the stations, uh, make some noise, yes. because they understand noise, and that's what that's what the other side has done. Do. Oh, we're not going to buy your product anymore. So we need to do that as well. Yeah. We need to get off yeah. our spiritual butts <laughs> <laughs> and do something. Right. Okay. Be careful. That's the end of that. Yeah, be careful. Will you join me in a word of prayer as we close today? <clears throat> Lord, there's no one like you. And Lord, we need the balance between loving and the balance uh, of, of speaking the truth in love. But Lord, unfortunately, we're not speaking the truth with or without love these days. So we pray, Father, we ask for and join together with so many people across this nation that seek you, Father, to forgive our sins of this land. You have said it. My people, that's the church, who are called by my name, will humble themselves. Lord, we have a proud spirit in this nation. And pray. Lord, we have people who are too lazy to pray in the church. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Father, we need forgiveness of sin. We need a healing in this land. We need an outpouring of your spirit. We're praying, Lord, for that third great awakening in this nation where the church comes alive and we burn so white hot for Jesus Christ that all those outside stand around and watch, cannot help but notice God is alive. God is real. And God is the one we want to serve. So, Father, we ask for that revival to come. We pray for this nation. We call out, though we don't deserve it, God bless America. Yes. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Yes. Heidi has her new book with her today, so uh, it's going to be available in the foyer. Shirley. Oh, good. I'd just like to everyone to know that today is what I did with Lord gets wedding Knowing Jim and Fran, that what I have to say is, how has Fran done it? That's yeah. all I can say. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I wouldn't change Jim. Jim. I, I absolutely love him. The sense of humor, and uh, we go back and forth. So, anyways, uh, Heidi has her book. It will be out in the lobby uh, for purchase, and uh, she'll sign it. And uh, we have got some snacks in the back, so uh, enjoy and uh, come back and join us another time. Thank you for being here.